An increasingly assertive China has warned that World War III is inevitable unless the United States stop meddling in the South China Sea affairs. Earlier this week, the People's Liberation Army said in a new white paper that it is going to up the ante in South China Sea. In a sign of its growing self-confidence, Beijing said that it would now focus less on defensive capabilities and step up the efforts to build offensive capabilities. China is aggressively building artificial islands in the disputed Spratly Islands area. The construction includes runways and port facilities that could harbor military planes and warships. Islands in the region are also claimed by the Philippines, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Vietnam who have all protested against China's expansion. Now last week, a U.S. military plan ignored repeated warnings from the PLA to fly reconnaissance missions over the disputed islands. U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter has refused to recognize artificial islands as a maritime zone controlled by a nation. He said Washington was determined to protect the freedom of navigation in the South China Sea as is allowed under international conventions. The Chinese military's new white paper notes that it is ready to use force beyond its borders in the air and at sea to safeguard the maritime possessions. Global Times, a mouthpiece of the Communist Party, said that China does not want a war, but if the United States' bottom line was to make China halt its activities, then a World War III was inevitable. New reports from Australia suggest the Chinese have moved weapons onto the contested islands, which a few months ago were little more than underwater reefs. Just a week ago, the Chinese military issued a veiled threat to a U.S. Navy P-8 Poseidon surveillance plane that flew toward the Spratly chain, which is claimed by several Asian nations, including the Philippines. A foreign military airplane, you are protecting my military security ear. Please go away quickly in order to run Rodman. The U.S. Defense Secretary, en route to a security conference in Asia, signaled a tougher U.S. stance. There should be no mistake about this. The United States will fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows, as we do all around the world. A view echoed by the U.S. Admiral, who first drew attention to China's construction of what he termed the Great Wall of Sand. There's no shortage of challenges that confront us. From North Korea with its quest for nuclear weapons, China's preposterous claims to and land reclamation activities in the South China Sea. The Chinese Foreign Ministry pushed back. Everyone is fully aware of the reason, which is that some countries keep playing up tensions and tarnishing the image of China for self-serving interests. On Tuesday, China held a groundbreaking ceremony for two lighthouses on the new islands. Since January, the Chinese have added 1,500 acres to the Spratly chain by dredging deep harbors and long runways that can handle warplanes. After years of unexplained double-digit defense spending increases, China released a white paper on its defense strategy this week. Quote, the traditional mentality that land outweighs sea must be abandoned. One third of the world's shipping commerce must pass through these waters, which are also rich in oil and gas. These are very important areas, especially the South China Sea, where you have $5.3 trillion of commerce goes over wow. that water each year. It's more important than the Suez and Panama canals combined. Despite China's claims that its intentions are peaceful, the Pentagon was skeptical. As one U.S. defense official put it to us, they are not research stations.